It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer, and it's coming to you from the Club 20 Fall Meeting in Grand Junction, Colorado. We are joined today by Casey Becker. She is a member of the Colorado House of Representatives. And I understand that you are new to the House. You were appointed about a year ago. How's the year been? That's right. It is has been an incredible honor. It has been fast and furious and fun. Uh, I uh, feel very honored to sure. have this opportunity. And I stepped in. I was sworn in November 4th right. after the former representative um, took a job um, in the private sector. and. Uh, How did it happen? I mean, yeah. give us, I like the kind of the stories. The phone rang. I mean, what exactly happened? My house was flooding at the time, actually. Of course. It was September 12th. Of course. Um, when I got um, all these phone calls and emails at one time and texts, and I was actually in the basement shop vacuuming, <laughs> um, trying to clean right. up my basement. And they, a bunch of folks called and said, Casey, um, State Representative Claire Levy has resigned, and um, are, are you going to run? Are you going to put right. your name in the hat? What are you going to do? And I said, right now I'm going <laughs> to clean, um, my, clean basement. my basement. Right. And so um, we let the floods pass, and then I uh, reached out to a few people and threw my name in the hat. And so there was a, a, a selection committee of right. about 35 people, um, and they chose me to replace but Claire. Tell me about the moment that you found out, I got it. Uh, do you remember? I, Come on, you remember. I do, <laughs> and um, immediately afterwards, folks started coming forward but immediately. where were you? Were you at the meeting? Yeah, so yeah. I was at the meeting. Right. I had done a speech. The right. other candidates had as well. How they many were there? They took a vote. There were, um, by that time, there were three. There Got had it. been four, uh -huh. and uh, they took a vote, and I... Um, uh, <laughs> you won. I immediately started getting, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. ideas for legislation, right, and so right. the job starts immediately. So, of course, in the House of Representatives, the elections are every two years. That's so right. So you immediately had to start running for election, re-election, and so talk to us about that process. I mean, it's very different running for office than anything else you could ever imagine. Yeah, you know, I I really didn't think of it as running for office. I just started thinking of it as immediately serving um, my district nice, nice. and and my community. And um, you know, the the legislative session is really really busy, right. and I have a very hey, you large right district. Right. So I didn't get out to the district as much during the session as I could. And since then, that's really what I've been doing. And so let's talk about the district. What a great district in North Central Colorado. Uh, one could say politically diverse. You represent downtown Boulder. You represent the border of Wyoming. That's right. And so talk to us about, you know, the beauty that is your district. Um, I have a geographically and politically diverse district, um, but it's fantastic and it has some of Colorado's best kept secrets. Of course. Um, so yes, it goes from the Wyoming border down to Mount Evans mm -hmm. and it goes from the, t the western town of Kremlin to downtown Boulder. And in that we have high-tech entrepreneurs. Of course. Um, we've got uh, farmers, ranchers, um, a lot of uh, students, college students. Right, you represent um, the university actually? Um, the, the campus? A lot of the students actually oh, live in my district and, they, yeah. and um, I just have a little teeny bit of the, of the campus. So as you've been walking, talking, uh, campaigning, whatever you want to call it, what are people saying to you? What's on top of mind? Yeah, Today. in my district, transportation is a huge issue. I-70 obviously is a major state corridor and it goes right through the district, as does US-36, which is um, a road that's currently being um, improved. And so, uh, you know, can we talk about transportation I means commerce yeah. yeah it means it's the local road really for right. a part of my community and so um, solving let's, the gridlock yeah, is an issue and let's talk about that because you know I-70 is so critical to the entire state of Colorado I mean so many towns rely on traffic coming off of I-70 from Denver or otherwise and so there's a lot of discussion about how to minimize that gridlock. You know, in the background, federal dollars really are not flowing. The transportation tax is not increased. State taxes are not changing. So what creative solutions have, has the legislature come up with on this front? 
Uh, one thing that happened recently is the expansion of the Veteran Memorial Tunnels, formerly known as the Twin Tunnels. Right. And that's really going to help congestion. And uh, the Colorado Department of Transportation, I think, has done a great job of coming up in the short term with some solutions, including the peak period shoulder lanes. Um, they've been funding a lot of studies, which is going to help us figure out what are the long-term solutions. And let's talk about peak period, congestion pricing, because it's a solution that has really taken off, not only in Colorado, but around the world. And I want to get a sense from you, your thoughts about it, because you could look at it two ways. One, incredibly inspired, money can flow right back in to the legislature as part of the general fund, and then, or directly into transportation projects. On the other hand, you know, does it create this kind of haves and have nots? You gotta pay to use the less congested road. What's your sense? You know, I think that um, for the local community that's impacted, Clear Creek County, that um, where these occur and right. is in my district, sure, sure. it will um, really benefit by having, the locals can now travel a little more freely on the local roads, right. on the back roads that um, right now are, are um, completely inundated with skier traffic. Which and is important to that county, I yes, mean, as an economic driver, so huge, if there's a tension there. Huge deal, and and the skiers can still get up to skiing, and um, and then the, the tollways go away when it's not needed. Right. And so you, you do have a choice to travel in the toll lanes or to not travel in the toll lanes, and um, I'm not sure how it's going to work out right. in terms of you know, uh, does it even out the traffic or not, right. but I think it's... But that's the hope, because mm -hmm. regardless, if people are getting off the regular road, paying as such, there are less people on the regular road, so it should impact everyone favorably, no? We we sure hope so, and but I don't think it is the, the final solution, and I think what a lot of folks in my district would really like to see is an advanced guideway system, basically a... a um, a, uh, a, a train. Um, it's very expensive yes. and um, we haven't come up with the funding for that. Uh, I think it would be a great experience for people to have. I think it um, would be efficient and very well received. It doesn't require um, expanding the road into um, the community right. as much, which is, which is also a real benefit. I want to ask about water, if I may. Water, uh, you know, we know the cliche from Mark Twain, whiskey is for drinking, water is for fighting over, and there are fights about water in Colorado. Uh, the governor has proposed an executive order plan. It's kind of still in the process. But we also know that when you talk about water, it's not Democrat, Republican. It's west versus east. That's right. And so you're kind of in the middle. <laughs> and I have west and I have you east. Do. And and that's okay because I think that um, actually the, the values are very similar in both parts of my district, in all parts of my district around water. Um, the governor has said, and, and I think my district is in, in agreement, that um, any solution has to start with conservation. Hmm. And um, just as the city of Boulder would like to make sure that you know, the cities get more efficient in their water use. That's exactly what the Western Slope communities would like in the to end. see. Bef exactly. So, um, but the Western Slope is where the water is, but not the population. So, you know, you got what is it, like 90 10, you know, all the, the 90% water is going to, you know, the other way for right. 90% of the population, but is the Western Slope benefiting? Does the Western Slope benefit from? I mean, you know, that's the frustration because yeah. they feel oh. as if they're shipping a lot of water to the east and are they getting the concomitant benefit back? That's right. It's it's important for our, our western slope communities to keep water right. for their own um, growth and development and uh, I really hope that that value is reflected in the state water plan. So do you expect that there will be a state water plan in the end? Do you think that there will we, absolutely be a state water plan? You know, a plan in itself is only a plan, right. and so what comes out of that plan, what change really happens, is going to happen at the legislature. And so, I look forward to seeing what that's going to look like. What, what all these communities, the the different roundtables that are really right. thinking through the issues, come up with as recommendations. Her name is Casey Becker. She is a newer member of the Colorado House of Representatives. She's running for re-election. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from Grand Junction, Colorado at the Club 20 Fall Meeting. I want to thank you so much for watching Charter Local Edition.